My dear students, in the previous standard, we have studied about observing space and about constellations. From early days, man has been curious about the sun as well as the moon and stars that are seen in the night sky. Using his boundless imagination, he tried to understand the sky as observed by his naked eyes. He noticed that the position of the stars changed with time and had something to do with the occurrence of seasons. As the knowledge of the cycle of seasons was necessary for agriculture, sky watching began to prove useful to him. The position of the constellations was also useful to the seagoers for navigation. Man began to make determined efforts to find the answers to questions which arose out of his sky watching. But he did not have any equipment to get a closer view of the stars and planets in the sky. In 1608, spectacle maker and researcher Hans Lepersche discovered that seeing through two lenses kept one behind the other seems to bring object closer to us. He thus made the first telescope. Galileo made a telescope in 1609 and used it for the space observations. He realized that there are many more stars that could be seen with naked eyes. Using his telescope, he also discovered the moons of Jupiter, the black spots on the sun, etc. Today, 400 years after Galileo's use of the telescope, tremendous progress has been made in the telescope technology and in the space science and technology on the whole. This great leap in technology has helped to construct for us an astounding picture of our universe. Space science and technology is not only important for research purposes, but also to help us to provide with many of the comforts and facilities we enjoy in our everyday life. A telescope is used to observe space, but will one telescope be sufficient for us to observe the space completely? Why do we need different telescopes for different purposes? Are telescopes installed when they are sent in the space? In this chapter, we are going to study the science behind many such questions. Students, let us see the optical telescopes. Most optical telescopes are made with two or more lenses as shown in the figure. To collect the maximum amount of light coming from a heavenly object, the objective lens should be made as large as possible. Using the light collected by the objective, a smaller lens called the eyepiece and produces a large image of a source. Light rays change their direction as they enter a lens from the atmosphere and again when they enter the atmosphere after passing through their lens. This is called refraction. Hence, such telescopes are called refracting telescopes. Students, optical telescope is helpful for space observation but it also has some difficulties. First, as we saw above, if we wish to obtain a bright image of a source by collecting the maximum possible light from it, the objective lens must be made as large as possible. However, it is very difficult to make very large lenses. Also, large lenses are very heavy and tend to get distorted. Second, as the objective and eyepiece are placed at the opposite ends of the telescope, the length of the telescope also increases with the increase in the size of the lenses and the telescope becomes difficult to manage. Third, the images formed by lenses have errors of colors. This is called chromatic aberration. To overcome these difficulties, telescopes are made using concave mirrors. As light rays get reflected by the mirrors in these telescopes, they are called as reflecting telescopes. In order to get a bright image of the source, large mirrors are necessary so that they can collect a large amount of light from the source. But it is easier to make large mirrors as compared to making large lenses. Also, big mirrors can be made by combining several smaller pieces. The weight of a large mirror is too less than that of lenses of the same size. The images formed by mirrors do not have errors of color. Only by using these large telescopes, we can see far away stars and galaxies, which we could never have seen with our naked eyes. Students, the reflecting telescopes are mainly of two types. First is Newtonian and second is Cassegrain type. Students, this is Newtonian telescope. A concave mirror is used here. 
the reflected rays converge at the focus. We have studied about this element in the previous standard. By the Newtonian method, light rays coming from space are reflected by the concave mirror. Before these reflected rays converge at the focus, they are deflected again by a small plane mirror. As a result, they get focused at a point lying on the perpendicular to the axis of the telescope cylinder. They pass through the eyepiece and we get a magnified image of the source. Students, as shown here in the Cassegrain method 2, a concave mirror is used. But at the center of the concave mirror, a hole is made. In front of the concave mirror, besides its focus, a convex mirror is placed. The light rays coming from space reflect from the concave mirror. These light rays pass through a hole at the center of the concave mirror and then through the eyepiece situated at the back of the mirror. The eyepiece gives us a magnified image of the source. In India, we have several telescopes with concave mirrors of 2 meter in diameter that have been in use for many years. The biggest optical telescope in India having a mirror of 3.6 diameter is situated in the Aryabhat Research Institute of Experimental Sciences, Nainital. This is the largest optical telescope in Asia. The short form of this institute is ARIES. That means Aryabhat Research Institute of Experimental Sciences and it is also called as Devasthal Telescope. Students, let us see the radio telescope. Many heavenly objects emit radio waves in addition to visible radiation. We cannot see this radiation with our eyes. Hence, a special type of telescope is used to receive these rays. It is called a radio telescope. It is made from one or more dishes of a particular parabolic shape. As an optical telescope, the incident radio waves are reflected by these dishes and converge at the focus. A radio receiver is placed at the focal point. The information gathered by this receiver is passed on to a computer which analyzes it and constructs an image of the source. A large radio telescope called the Giant Meter Wave Radio Telescope that is GMRT has been erected at Narayangao near Pune. It uses radio waves having wavelengths of about a meter coming from planets and stars to study those heavenly bodies. This telescope is actually a collection of 30 dishes, each having a diameter of 45 meter. It is called a giant telescope, as the arrangement of the 30 dishes over an area, which measures up to 25 km across, is made in such a way that it works as a single dish having a diameter of 25 km. This means that, the GMRT gives us the same data that we would have got from a telescope having a single dish of 25 km diameter. GMRT has been made by Indian scientists and engineers at minimum cost. It is a world standard research facility. Scientists study the solar system, solar winds, pulsars, supernova, interstellar, hydrogen clouds, etc. with the help of the GMRT. Scientists from all over the world come to India to make use of this facility. Mulanu Kasawatla Hai video, Amala comments made Zarur Kalwa. Ya video la like kara, share kara, and ya channel subscribe kara. Aplia Beskramatil, Sampurna Sankalpana Spasta on a Sati, Buddhiraj eLearning.com. Ya website la video.